Praise God, it's me, Pastor, uh, Pastor David Santos here, and I'm very glad that I'm joining all of you in this live stream this evening. I'm speaking here from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and I would like to share a message with all of you, and I would like you together with your family, type there below what is your prayer request because we are going to make a prayer for all of you in this evening in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm very glad to be here. Please prepare yourself because I'm sure that what I have to talk with you is about the Word of God. It's going to help you a lot in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I would like to begin here. Uh, I would like to ask you if you can share this live stream with your friends on your Facebook page because we're talk we're going to talk about a very important thing. The title of our message today is Searching for What is Lost. Maybe you lost something. Maybe you're about to lose something. I don't know what's that. Maybe you say, Pastor, I lost my joy. I lost my peace. I lost something that is very important to me. I would like to pray with you and we, will, we are going to search and we will find. Because the Bible says that those who look for something, who seek for something, they shall find. Amen? So let's, I would like you to sing with me a very beautiful song. We are going to sing like the psalmist David said. He said that God was his hiding place and I will be back here with all of you in Jesus name in Jesus name
Hallelujah. I'm back with all of you. And I'm seeing there some comments. Some people are uh, commenting here. Yes, just send your prayer request. Because we are going to pray in few minutes with all of you. I would like to ask you right now if you can prepare your glass of water because we're going to join our faith and surely God is going to hear our prayer because there's no distance in the spiritual world. I'm here from Brazil, you're there, wherever you are, maybe you're locked down in your home, but God can reach you with His power because the Word of God says that His hands are stretched out so He can bless us and be sure that He is here with us to bless in your house wherever you are right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? I would like to share with you now this uh, testimony of our friends back there in South Africa. I want you to see what God has done in their lives and after this testimony because a testimony people can help us it can help us to understand what God has done in somebody's life and we can be sure that God is going to do in our lives as well. So pay attention in this testimony. Ask a friend to join us. Gather with your family because we, today is Wednesday when we pray in our church for our family. Isn't that right? So we are going to pray uh, with our families after the message. But before that, I would like to ask you to pay attention in this testimony and I will be, I'll be back with all of you. I was born a Muslim. My husband converted to Islam through me. In our marriage, my wife and I could never get to the point of having an agreement. We never spoke nicely. We were always arguing a lot. I suffered for 14 years in my marriage because my husband drank a lot, had affairs with other women, and went out partying. I was an adulterer. We argued, we cursed at each other, and sometimes I hit him even. There was no communication. We were, we were totally at the, point of, at the point of divorcing. Aside from the struggle in their marriage, our sister starts having a problem in her leg. All these blisters and lumps came out of her legs, you know? My legs used to hurt and they were very swollen, so I couldn't stand on them. So I went to the doctor two times. Nothing happened. I suffered from this for three months. She got irritated because those things just didn't go away. So I just sat on the couch. I was at home alone, so I turned on the TV and I saw the faith show. Pastor Santos was preaching and I cried, I prayed, and it felt like I gave my heart to a person I did not even know. But it felt good. That man on TV actually made me see that there was life beyond this life. So I started drinking the water every day while I watched Dr. Suarez. Then Pastor Santos, and then we prayed. I would just pass by, look at it, and say, Ah, you're wasting your time. I was watching. I was praying, and Dr. Suarez was praying for the people at home. So I was praying along with him for the pain in my legs. I prayed so much, and I didn't realize the pain was already gone. But when I stood up, I walked, and I said, There's no more pain. I said, God, did you really heal me? Dr. Suarez is in the TV, but he prayed for my legs and the pain is now gone. Glory to God, I am healed. She went to the Grace of God Church. When I went to the church, I had a great experience. And that's the reason I wanted to go back every time, because coming from a different religion, I needed to learn more about God through the preaching. All I know is that there was transformation starting, right? He made an altar call to go up front if you want your husband next to you in the church. So I went to the front and he was praying. And I, I actually saw my husband next to me. And I said, Lord, if it's coming from you, make it happen, please. Christmas Day, 2016. What a glorious day. I got in the church and the Spirit of the Lord moved all over. And then I said, this is my day, as they say at the D-Day. This is my day of deliverance. I told her I gave my life to Jesus. I couldn't believe it was actually happening. It wasn't even that long ago. It was great feeling. God was great. 
my whole life, my family's life changed. I don't drink anymore. Our marriage is very, very nice in every aspect. There's no more stressing, no more arguments. He's a better man. I love him now. More than I loved him the first time I saw him. He's a man of God now. We both gave our lives and everything because God forgave me for what I've done. So I also need to forgive my husband. If we want to tell each other that we love each other, we can say it with, with a free heart. On the 28th of January, Pastor Santos baptized us and we are now official members of the International Grace of God Church. We are here because we need to serve God and God alone. That is our purpose. I said, Lord, use me so I can gain souls for your kingdom. We filled out the form to become sponsors. I sponsor because the faith show is actually changing lives. If you have God, you have everything. There, I found my salvation and my family so I can give all the praise and glory to God. That's all I can do. Hallelujah. So you saw what God has done in this family. He can do in anybody's lives. So I would like to meditate on the Word of God with you. If you have your Bible right there in your house, please open your Bible in the book of uh, Second John, second, the second epistle of John, from verse number 8. I would like to meditate on it with all of you in the name of Jesus. Pastor, what are you going to talk about? As I told you in the beginning of this life, we are going to talk about searching for what is lost. Because let's be honest, many people have lost many things in their lives. And many people are losing right now. In this time of trouble that we are facing in the world, in this uh, COVID-19 that people are, are facing a lot of troubles. They are depressed. They are losing their jobs. People are losing their peace. People are losing their trust. But I would like to invite you to pay attention to what the Word of God is saying to us in this evening. And I am sure that the Lord God and I will go, I am going to help you to find what you have lost. So open your Bible in the epistle of 2 John. 2 John from verse 8. Pay attention to what I'm going to tell you right now. And the Bible says like this. Look to yourselves that we do not lose those things we worked for, but that we may receive a full reward. So what is the Apostle John is saying right here? He's saying, look to yourselves. Many people, they like to point their fingers to others. They like to point their fingers and say, it's not, it's not my fault. But it's your fault, it's his fault, it's her fault. No, we should look to ourselves. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians, chapter 11 verse 28 he said let a man examine himself you should examine yourself look at your life let's keep on going look to yourselves that we do not lose those things we worked for you know we all work we all work in life let let me put here, this inside so i can listen to myself better we all work for something in life we sweat, we work hard, we get tired, but we should take care of what we have worked for. Because there's no use if you work for something, you work very hard, but you don't take care of that thing. Let's talk about our family, since it's Wednesday of the family. There's no use, you have a beautiful family, you have a beautiful marriage, you have a beautiful life, great opportunities that God has given to you. Maybe you say, Pastor, I don't have all that. Yes, you do. Because if you look to your life, look to yourself. Don't look at others. Don't compare yourself with others. But if you look to yourself, you're going to find many things that you can be grateful for. Look to yourself. God has given you great things. You have worked hard to get it. Because nothing in life comes like this. 
Nothing is easy in life. You, you get tired, you sweat, but you should watch for it. You should take care of it. Take care of your family. Take care of yourself. Don't look at others. And what else does the verse say? It says, but that we, that we may receive a full reward. I'm sure, my friend, that you want to receive the full reward. I am sure that in the end of the month, when you work, you sweat, you go there to your, to your workplace, I am sure that in the end of the month, you want your full salary. I am sure that you don't want it cut, cut in half. Nobody likes that. Everybody wants to be paid correctly. And in the spiritual life, it's the same thing. Everybody wants to be rewarded, but to receive the full reward, you must examine if you are standing firm in faith. You must examine yourself. Again, I say, look at your life, look at your family, look at yourself in this evening and ask yourself and say, God, am I standing firm in faith or Am I like that person that is doubting all the time? I would like, I would like to, you to open with me your Bible in the book of Luke. Luke chapter 15. Let's go there in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 15. The Gospel of Luke. Let us meditate on it right now. Luke 15 verse 8. We are going to see here the parable of the lost coin. As I told you, we are going to speak here about searching for what is lost. Maybe you lost something very valuable to you. Maybe uh, you're losing something. But let us pay attention to what the parable says. Luke 15 verse 8. If you found, found it on your Bible, just type there. Amen, Pastor. I found it. Just type there your prayer request and we are going to pray right after the, the message in Jesus' name. The Bible says, Or what woman having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I lost. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Maybe you can say, Pastor, I have someone in my family. I have a friend that he's living like a sinner. This person is lost. Pay attention to what the Word of God is saying. Maybe you are losing yourself. Maybe you are not preparing yourself to receive the full reward. And what is the greatest reward that we have in life? Is that when God is going to call us and He's going to say, you may have the kingdom of God that is prepared for you even before you were born. It's the salvation. That is the greatest reward that we can have. So Jesus is talking about a woman who loses one coin. Uh, let me explain this to you. What was one coin in those times? A coin, it was equivalent to a full day of work. And let me ask you something. What is va very valuable to you? What is very, very valuable? Pastor, I value my family very much. Pastor, uh, I value very much the peace that I have. Pastor, I am a person that I'm very joyful. Wherever I go, I come with the joy, the happiness that God has given me. Pastor, I value very much love. You are a person that likes to be loved. Everybody likes to be loved. Pastor, I value respect. Uh, there is a saying here in Brazil that we say like this. 
Respect is good and I like it. Maybe you are that kind of person. Respect is good and I like it. I like respect, Pastor. Maybe these are some of the things that you value too much. And what should I do for me to find it again? You can find it here in the parable of the lost coin. You can see that she had how much coins? She had 10 coins. She lost one. Pastor, she had other nine. Why did she go after one coin only if she had other nine? She went after that one coin because that was very valuable to her. And I'm sure that you have something valuable in your life that you're not having anymore. Maybe you're losing love, you're losing respect, maybe you lost your job, maybe you lost your peace, maybe you lost something that you value too much. But what should we do before all these things that we're facing? First point, please pay attention to this because it's very important. Read along with me again, verse number 8. What woman having ten silver coins, if she loses how much? She, lo she lost one coin, does not light a lamp. Pay attention to this, my friend. You want to find back in your life what you, you lost? You must turn the lights on. You must light the lamp. The psalmist said in Psalms uh, 119, verse 7, uh, 105. He said, he said like this, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a lamp to my path. If you want to find something that you have lost, Pastor, I lost my son. You want to find him again? You want to bring him back to Jesus? You want to bring him or her back to the ways of the Lord? You must turn the lights on. You must light the lamp. When Jesus once was teaching that we are the light of the world. If you are not shining, if you don't have the light in, in your life, how can people find the way back? You must light the lamp. Second step, you must sweep the house. See what she, she did here. Uh, does not light a lamp. Sweep the house. What is this, Pastor, sweeping the house? Jesus taught how to sweep the house. Remember, once Jesus was, was entering the temple and he saw people doing wrong stuff there. He saw that the house of the Lord was converted into a, a house that they were selling many things but not worshiping the king, the king, the father. And Jesus swept his house. What does it mean you should do? Whatever does not belong to God in your life, in your house, within you, you must get rid of that. Sweep your house. Sweep your mind from, from wrong thoughts. You must be clean because you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen in Jesus' name? Third step and last and I will finish here because I'm sure that you have many other things to do. Third step, read with me. So, she light, she, what did she do? Light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it. Are you search, searching carefully? Are you searching with diligence? Pastor, how can I search carefully? How can I search with diligence? The Bible says in Jeremiah 29. Can you open your Bible with me? And we are going to be done here. In Jesus' name. Let me open my Bible. In Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 12. Jeremiah 29 verse 12. Search with diligence. He says like this. Jeremiah 29 verse 12. Then you will call upon me. And go and pray to me. And I will listen to you. And you will seek me. And find me. When you search for me. With all your heart. So are you searching with all your heart? 
Are you applying yourself to seek and find, or are you just are, are you just praying to the air, or are you just praying to the nature? Some people have this kind of thought. Some people some people think that uh, Mother Nature is going to answer them. Some people think that somehow something good will happen to them. No, it's not like that. The Bible says, my dear friends, that God is good. And there's no other place that you're going to find goodness in this world. There's no other place that you're going to find something good if you don't go directly to God. So, if you go to God, you seek with all your heart. It must be with all your heart. Seek. He says here in verse 13, And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And I would like you to do as that woman did. What did she do? Let's go back to it again. Light a lamp, sweep the house, and search with diligence. If you want to find something that you lost or maybe you're about to lose, Pastor, I don't want to lose that's what you that's what you must do the word of god is a lamp to your feet to your life you must take away from from your mind from your thoughts from your life whatever is disturbing you whatever is on your way and you must search with diligence search with all your heart and i'm sure that you will find the lost coin you will find love in your family you will find respect. You will find whatever is, is that you need. Because God is not going to let you lack anything. Because He is a good father. What is the father that wants to see uh, their children suffering? God doesn't want to see you suffering. He wants to see you happy, living in victory, from victory to victory, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen? And I'm sure that you understood some of what I spoke to you here in this evening, in Jesus' name. Amen. So what can, what can we do now? Let me put here a second song. Prepare your glass of water. Because in few minutes after this song, we are going to pray in Jesus' name. Wisdom and all the ways 
of man You were here before the world began Above all kingdoms Above all thrones Above all wonders the world has ever known Above all wealth and treasures of the earth There's no way to measure what you're worth Crucified, lay behind a stone You live to die, rejected and You took the fall And thought of me Above all Crucified Lay behind a stone You live to die Rejected and alone Like a rose Trampled on the ground, you took the fall and thought of me above all. You took the fall and thought of me above all. Praise God. So, I'm glad to be here back with all of you. Let me read here some comments of some of our friends. Brother Jonathan saying, good evening, good evening to you. Uh, Sister Zildete, uh, who else? Sister Alice, Sister uh, Mariana, we are going to pray with all of you in Jesus' name. Let me ask you, did you, did you prepare your glass of water? We are going to pray right now. You can send your prayer request. I'm going to give uh, one more minute for you to send your prayer request here. Because I would like to pray with all of you. Yes, just some seconds I'm going to pray with all of you. Send your prayer, prayer request right now. And we have good news. I heard that the president over there in South Africa, President Hamaposa. God, God bless the president. Let's pray for the president president as well the president has uh, said that the churches are allowed from 1st of June to open up the doors and uh, the churches there are going to have their services again uh, it has been considered as an es essential service so praise God for that of course we're going to take all the precautions and if you feel comfortable going back to church and praising God over there. If, if you feel uh, safe, if you're not feeling any uh, symptoms of this virus, surely you can uh, go back and enjoy once again the presence of the Lord in our church there in peril. So praise be to God for that. Amen. Let's pray as we heard the word of God I'm going to pray for everybody. We're going to pray for the world, for the president, because uh, we have this, we have been taught about this, that we should pray for our authorities. So let's pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Please join your faith with me and we are going to pray and cry out to God knowing that he will answer our prayers in Jesus' name. Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we come before your presence right now. Me, with many people that are watching me right now through this video, through their cell phones, in their house. Father, I ask that you put your power 
in this glass of water. I ask, Father, that you would come down with your power and deliver this brother, this sister from sickness. Deliver, Father God, this, this person from this virus. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command now all forces of evil to live this life, to live this mind, to live this heart, live this life right now. I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus, the name that is above every name. Father, I ask, come with your power right now. Visit this person, visit this family right now. This person that is suffering with depression, with diseases. This sister, Father, that is crying out to you right now and she's saying, Father, I lost my peace. I lost, Father God, a joy, happiness. She's losing her son to drugs. Father, but I command right now in your name, Jesus, that all these problems should live this life in the name of Jesus Christ. My Lord, we pray right now for the world and we ask you, God, bring healing. Bring restoration, give knowledge, give wisdom and understanding to the doctors, to the people that are trying to evolve a cure for this virus in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray against this, this spirit of the coronavirus. We say, leave this house. Leave someone that this person loves, someone that this person knows. In the name of Jesus, I command right now. Yes. Put your, put your faith in action right now. You should believe and pray with me because the power of God is reaching you wherever you are. Father, I ask, put your power, your anointing in this glass of water and may your Holy Spirit bless and keep everyone in Jesus' name. I pray for the church in South Africa. Father, may the grace of God International Church grow and come back as never before. Help, Father, each one from this 1st of June, help each person, God, to gather themselves, gather their strength, and come back to your house in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you believe along with me, and I cannot forget Jesus, I should pray for the president. Bless the president Ramaphosa. Bless the president from Brazil, Bolsonaro. Father, we pray for all of them right now. Give them wisdom and knowledge. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray and can you say with me, Amen and Amen. Please, you may drink from your water in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe that you are blessed. Amen. I believe that you are blessed. I, I've been blessed here from, from where I am. And I believe that you have been blessed as well. I would like to send my regards to all of you. I cannot forget to talk about the necessities that we have. The Church of God. We are facing a very hard time in Brazil, throughout the world. The churches are closed. But I ask you, if you have your love that you need to present to God I would like you I would like to ask you do not forget to be faithful because God is faithful to you so we have many ways that you can help the church of God to move forward to keep growing and one of those ways I'm going to uh, give you here right now the two accounts of the church the first one is NetBank you can make your deposit whenever you go to the bank. Whatever God is telling you to do. I cannot tell you what you, what you must do. You must be obedient and hear the, the, the voice of God. First, you can do your deposit through NetBank. You have there the account of the church. And Pastor, I don't have NetBank. But if you are with FNB, you can do your deposit through the F&B account of our church. Amen? And this way, I believe that the church of God will keep growing. Help us to win souls. Help us to, to reach people through television, through Facebook, through YouTube, the social media. 
people must hear about the gospel. Pe people must hear that God can heal them. You know, uh, this time that we are facing, many many people think they are going to die. Maybe you, you had these thoughts, Pastor. I had th these thoughts that I thought that I was going to die with all with all this. No, I command you are not going to die. You are going to live, because. Whenever we trust in Jesus, in the word of God, we have life in abundance. We don't have death. Okay? In Jesus' name. So, thank you very much for being here with, with me. I believe that God has used me to, to speak to you in some way, somehow. Share the video. Share this message with someone. Send, send, send to them through WhatsApp. Send to them. Uh, uh, I don't know how. You know. How, how you can do that. So share this video and many people are going to hear this message and be blessed. Amen. I would like to thank you, Pastor Santos. Thank you to all of you who were together here with me in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I would like to see you next time. I'm praying for you and I'm, I'm asking God that He should be with you all the days of your life. Do not fear because... The Lord God is for you. And he, if He's for us, no one can stand against us. Be sure, be confident of that in Jesus' name. Amen, my friends. So, until next time, bye-bye. God bless you in Jesus' name. Bless you. God wants to set you.